therapy. An unexpected side effect of COVID-19 has been a meat shortage triggered by a broken supply chain, blamed in part on outbreaks at processing plants, among other reasons. So what does this mean for consumers? Youssef Mahmoud from Young Voices up late with me on the Final Five to break it all down. How are you tonight? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Let's, I'm glad to have you here. Uh, this is, if, look, for a lot of people, this is a tough topic to digest right now. Consider the fact we're down to the point where Wendy's, some locations, aren't selling hamburgers because there's this meat shortage. So we're hearing many different reasons why the supply chain, uh, and apparently this is just the tip of the iceberg. We are seeing, though, a strong push to get people to, to move towards plant-based products. Yeah, that's right. And I, and I think this should come as no surprise, given how inefficient animal agriculture is compared to its plant-based counterparts. Now, in order to feed a nation of millions of people, in order to satisfy the demand they have for animal meat, the only way you can do that is by breeding and slaughtering billions of animals. And the only way to do that economically for companies is to keep them in tiny conditions like factory farms, where you have thousands of animals going through every day with workers in, in small, tight-knit conditions. And this creates two issues. One, it makes social distancing impossible, which is why we're seeing these outbreaks and meat plant closures. But two, even more importantly, I would say, is a public health issue. Factory farms are the perfect breeding ground for the next pandemic. Look, Jim, think about the previous outbreaks of SARS, MERS, Ebola. Mm -hmm. All these diseases are animal to human transmissions. So the more that we have all these animals in tight spaces, in unsanitary conditions, the more we're rolling the dice to see when the next pandemic will come. We know that this is a, a huge industry and for many, many states, many cities, this is maybe not the only industry, but certainly the dominant industry. So there are jobs at stake here. This is something that uh, affects people, not just in terms of what they're eating, but as sir, some people look at this situation where it stands right now and they're thinking, well, look, there's been a push for a long time. People were talking about climate change and the issue and saying um, we need to consider plant-based alternatives then. Is this just another excuse towards pushing Americans away from a carnivorous diet and towards plant-based? Right, absolutely not. And this is this is grounded in, in real science and a real understanding of where diseases come from. And again, the reason why these outbreaks are happening is because factory farms simply don't allow for social distancing. Unfortunately, when it comes to the job losses we're seeing now, there's very little we can do in the short term other than unemployment benefits to resolve that issue. Mm -hmm. um, some states are exploring occupational licensing uh, jubilees to make sure that people are able to switch occupations when they need to. But in the long term, I really do think that uh, people who are currently farming will be able to switch over to plant-based farming. There are already organizations right now, like ReFarmed, dedicated to helping farmers take what is currently an animal agriculture farm and turning it into a plant-based farm. You know, what's striking, too, is when you, when you think about the impact that this is having on a lot of these processing facilities, where you are going to have animals who are raised for livestock, raised for consumption, there won't be anybody to... And let's be honest, slaughter the animals, process the animals. So a lot of these animals that are being raised for that reason uh, may be slaughtered without, without reason. They will not be uh, converted to meat. They will not be served. That's something that has to be considered as well. I mean, we've seen this play out, especially as it, as it brews, as we see uh, these processing plants where you have people testing positive, where their output is so, so much lower than where it normally stands. Uh, you know, there's also cost considerations, though, because I think about healthy eating. And when we talk about trying to push Americans towards eating more fresh f foods and vegetables, for some people, it is prohibitively expensive. There are food deserts around this country. We see some right here in D.C. where you can't go into a grocery store and eat fresh foods and vegetables. You have to buy processed stuff. So, you know, how do you make this more accessible? How does this become a more financially viable alternative for people if they're thinking, you know, they can't afford uh, plant based meats? Right. That's that's an excellent question, Jim. And I think the answer lies in the, the evolution of technology over time. Uh, if you ask people in the 1990s, are you going to buy a digital camera? The answer was no, because film cameras happened to be less expensive at the time. But because digital cameras are fundamentally more efficient, digital cameras ended up winning the race, becoming cheaper over time. Mm -hmm. Plant-based meat is a very new industry and is already doing a very good job cutting costs now. I don't think it's reasonable to expect Americans to completely switch overnight. 
But I think as time goes on, as technology improves, the price will come down just as it has for other technological advances. I, I think the point we, I think when we crossed that Rubicon was when Burger King started selling an Impossible Burger. I never thought I'd see the day where you go into some restaurants and that's a $14, $15 option. And now you can get that at Burger King, which was unheard of uh, a year, two, three years ago. Yeah, exactly. And I, I can tell you, I fooled a lot of my friends by giving them impossible whoppers. I, I will say, look, I'm a, I, I am a meat eater. I love steak. Uh, that's one of my favorite meals. But I will say, you know, I have friends who are vegans and they've turned me on to certain foods. I kind of enjoy it. I don't see myself making a full transition to that. But, you know, it's good to know that there are alternatives out there. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the right now, we're, we can only ask that people do what they can, given the circumstances that they're handed. All right. Yusuf Mahmoud, thank you very much. I appreciate the perspective tonight. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. We talk politics. We talk meat on here, too, on The Final Five. We're back after this. <laughs>